Hookaholics, hashtag Hookaholics. Um, we've got a two bagger. So I was debating on how to film this. I was going to do individual video, but I decided um, since these things, some of these are going to me, and some of these are going to one of you. So adding to our Christmas in July, I decided to stop off at Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, I had a I had two coupons. I had a ten dollar off when you spend so much because I shop there so often. And I or uh, yeah. And then I also had a, a twenty dollar off coupon because I shop there so often. So I got thirty dollars worth of coupon savings. So I basically decided to go into the store see what I could get. So basically this is a fifty percent bag. So I bought a couple of items that I saw there um, and paid half price for that. And while I was perusing my mail. I got a big bag of goodies from, uh, you can see that little orange sticker right there, our good friends at Ollie's Discount Bargain Outlet. So uh, a lot of things in here and something that I've been hunting for and couldn't find. It. Dick's didn't carry it and Walmart didn't carry it and the local supply places around me didn't carry it. Ollie's had it of all places. Ollie's had a bait that I've been hunting for since last year during the summertime. Uh, one of my favorite styles of top water, the pompadour. Um, if you don't know what a pompadour is, look it up. It's, it's an impressive bait. It goes back to my grandpappy. It goes back to my father. Uh, and certainly it's, it's a mainstay deep in my heart to, to swim pompadour style baits uh, today and to keep that going. All that said, I'm going to try to keep this as quick as possible. Knowing my mouth, it's not going to happen. But because uh, we got a lot to go through, I'm going to start off first with my 50% off bag from Dick's. So, again, like I said, I stopped off at Dick's. Um, I got uh, two, four, six, eight, nine, nine items. Some more expensive items. Um, the total original was uh, 58.91, but with my discounts, it brought the Price down with tax added afterwards to thirty dollars and eighty three cents. So from fifty nine sixty bucks to thirty one thirty bucks, so fifty percent off. Not bad. And I'm a fan of some uh, GDM stuff, so we're gonna go through this and see what we got. So I got because I ran out um, of the Springlock. Uh, I call them hitchhikers. There's another brand calls them hitchhikers. This is VMC's version of it. So it's a spring lock keeper that you put onto any bait. It's got just a little loop on the end. You have to be careful with these VMC versions. Um, the hitchhikers are a little bit tighter, slightly smaller, but they're, the, the hitchhikers are also uh, like a brass thing. But let me get this out of the package. Of course, this is gonna take up 15 minutes. So you have, you can see you have this little cotter pin style clip that goes around the eyelet of your bait, your hook, what have you. And then on the opposing side, you have the spring of the, block my face out here, the spring of that hook lock keeper. The spring lock keeper, and then obviously on the other side is that little clip. So you just throw this onto any bait uh, hook you want, and uh, then you can use this side to attach your, your soft plastic. Excellent for offset worm hooks that are in line where you can get this to kind of come over and it's soft and pliable enough that it will flex down to give you that perfectly flush trailer presentation, a nice straight trailer presentation, and still have the weedless Texo, uh, Texpo's rig of the trailer, as opposed to some of them where when the eye is connected in line with the hook point, then you're running your soft plastic and then you gotta kind of bend your soft plastic and it gives you this awful kind of, um, you know, porpoising action to your plastic, soft plastic bait, and that's not always ideal in the presentation that you want to go for. Um, so I got these. I'm not going to mind you with the price of each item. Basically, you know, $4 here, $6 there, etc. Um, 
we are talking obviously dicks, so you know you're paying a little bit more. I've got, because I love this design and I've used it well, three to four shallow cold water right now, water's in the 40s, uh, mid to upper 40s. So this is the Ripstop Tail Minnow. It's a Rapala. Dives four to, uh, three to four foot. It's a three and a half inch, quarter ounce, little jerk bait. I love these little rip stops. I do. I think they're great jerk baits. Um, they have an action unlike a lot of other jerk baits. Rapala by far, great, great brand. Uh, I've never had any problems. This is the Albino Shiner. Um, so you got that little silver and white, and you got the little blue chartreuse on the tip and chartreuse on the nose, just to call in those uh, those fish with a little bit of extra flair. I've got something that's great for, I mean, um, SFMF Fishing did say, state something quite a few videos back about the color schemes for everybody's waterways. Um, quick question. What is your personal forage? Like the, the fish in your lake, the bass, smallmouth, largemouth, um, crappy, it, what, what are your local waterways particular bait, prey, fish? Um, here in New Jersey, it's primarily crayfish, and um, obviously we have some perch, and we have uh, bluegill. Bluegill, pumpkin seed, or red-eared, uh, uh, you know, long-eared, bluegill, long-eared. Um, but what is yours? Do you have shiners? Do you have uh, kokanee? Do you have, um, what, what is your particular forage in your lake? Because I'd be interested, and, where, and obviously please put in there a comment, where you're from, you Oklahoma, you Texas, you whatever, because I'd love to hear the, the prey species around your neck of the woods compared to mine. Uh, that's also going to help influence me in my future giveaways, maybe even with this giveaway coming up in July, as to what kind of patterns I should start shooting for, because I know that I've been a little bit biased, and I don't want to be biased in picking out some of the colors, uh, the silver tones, the, the transparent tones, um, the bluegill patterns, when maybe I should be going for more of a shiner pattern for a lot more of you, or uh, you know, go with like what works here, perch patterns. So we've got a perch pattern. This is yellow perch in the husky. This is a um, Rapala husky jerk, four to eight foot depth, and it's the seven sixteenths, uh, four and three quarter inch long. Uh, you know, it's just your standard wooden. You can't you can't go wrong with with Rapala baits, um, Rapala. But uh, pop you the other side. See if I can get you out of here. Yay! See, that's how it's done. That's how it's done. No, no redemption. You don't need to cut yourself with a big ass knife. Just use your fingers. <laughs> yeah, Rapala, great packaging. Helps stores not lose their product. Uh, it makes it difficult for people to disrupt them in the in the stores. Um, also, big big shout out. Uh, a little comment. In, in the description down below of a former video. Uh, I'll leave the link to that video here uh, in the card. And uh, you can check out the comments of that video. And we got a little bit of, of back and forth and appreciative commentary uh, from one of the members of MTB staff uh, talking about how the retail boxes, you go into Walmart, you go into stores, and unfortunately, disreputable people are tearing into these boxes and monkeying around and, and opening the baits and and removing baits from the box and then leaving the product on the on the shelf and that's a real uh, it's a huge shrink issue it's a huge loss um, to both the stores and to us fishermen who want to go in and grab an MTB retail box but it's been torn open and it's just not worth you know I'm not going to put my money into a damaged product um, so they're coming up with ways and systems to make it more uh, difficult for people to destroy destroy and disrupt the packages which I'm all for so it protects us, the consumer. So when we go into the store, we pick up the box, we know everything that's supposed to be in that box is in that box. Side note, um, get box cards in every single box listing. Put up in a red circle on the top the number of items that are supposed to be in the box. You don't, don't doesn't have to be bait count. It doesn't just have to be on the outside of the box. Put it on the bait card inside. Big red circle says eight. Eight products in the, in the box. And then when we go through, if we open that box at home and there's only seven, we know there's a QA uh, quality assurance problem or somebody has tampered with the box and we can get that rectified. So that would also help and list those items that are supposed to be in the box. Um, so anyway, perch pattern, jerk bait, 
excellent. Again, cold water times. This is also suspending. I love, love, always go for suspending. And I prefer to get a suspending slow rise bait because you can always swap out your hook. Go from, you know, a four to a, a six uh, or to get it to, 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 to float even faster or go from, you know, the smaller hook, get a larger hook and, and let it suspend. Um, again, this one here is the Husky Jerk. It's a swimming depth but it's um, suspending straight up. So I wouldn't monkey with these because it'll just suspend. Turn it down to that depth and it'll just hold. But I do have some in here that are slow rise. Uh, next up, another Husky Jerk. This one is in the HJ8. So this is a four to six and it's eight centimeters or three and an eighth length, uh, quarter ounce. And again, this one is a suspending as well. And this one goes for that straight shiner pattern that minnow pattern, another great color. I love this in dingy water. Right now you've got winter ended, you've got all that snow melt coming in off the hills around, around the lakes, around the ponds. All that's gonna muddy up the, the surface of the banks. That's gonna wash down, it's gonna cloud out and silt out your water. Go to baits that are silver, bright chartreuse, bright orange, those colors that you would use in dark stained water because for the time being, until all that sediment settles down, all that mud wash out from the snow uh, melt settles down, the influx of water from you know, the Highland Reservoir down to your lowland lake, um, you know, you're gonna end up with a lot of silt and a lot of muck, and you're gonna need to go to those more high vis baits. Um, just a small, small piece of common sense. I talked about this in my MTB unboxing. This is my go-to, I love these hooks so I needed to get a couple more these are the size six um, again like I said if I was dealing with something like here where you've got a slightly smaller hook and say this was a floating bait I can throw these size sixes on in this in this center tail and have not only a slightly larger heavier you know uh, hook to help kind of drag this and keep this down so it's not floating up but it also, I love those little spins on the bottom because they add that little bit of extra flash, which helps cue that fish into, a, into striking that particular hook. I also like to swap out these front trebles for blood red trebles. That's just gimmicky. It's a, just me. It's just a confidence booster. Uh, I don't always do it. Typically, I fish. I'll fish it with stock from Rapala. I'll fish it with stock hooks for a while. Once those hooks start to get you know, bent up and, and dinged, and I hone them maybe once or twice, then I'll swap out and, and hook up a new hook. I don't mind being out on the water. Like I said in past videos, I have my little kit of uh, small files, and I'll hone up and sharpen, and well, not sharpen, but hone um, those hooks back up to a, a, a you know, razor sharp edge, and try to fish them for as long as possible. At the end of the season, I'll swap all my hooks out and replace those that need be, um, and then I get the, the old hooks sit them down on a terry cloth towel and I'll sit there for an hour and I'll just go through my hooks, see which ones are keepers, which ones are lost causes, hone up and sharpen the really good ones and, uh, and then be able to recycle them in for the next season. Because as much as I spend, I do like to save as well. All right, couple more. Uh, I got a really nice one that I love. So I got me a uh, flashback, flashback from Z-Man. These are tiny little lures little soft plastics um, with an eighth ounce. Basically, it's a mini chatterbait. It's gonna go in my light rig for my ultralight setup. But you've got a curly tail as well as this thin soft plastic minnow bait. So you got the thin one, and it also comes with an alternate trailer, which is a curly tail style. So you get two different presentations on a mini chatterbait vibrating jig head. All right, excellent, excellent idea. I love these. This is great for, uh, you know, fishing for uh, smallmouth bass, certainly fishing any kind of pan fish that might be attracted again in the, in the dirty water. Although this clear color with this little silver, that's more of a, a fresh, clean, uh, gin clear water presentation. Uh, I did get one for dirty or stained water. So this one is in the finesse version, this is the flashback, and this one is, oh, this, excuse me, this is the silver natural, and this one's the golden black for my dirty, silver natural for the, for the clear water, for my gin clear. 
That again goes in my ultralights, so I'm gonna enjoy that. I'm, I'm anxious to see what that feels like on my ultralight rod. I'm sure that's gonna be like, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> it's gonna be something to shock me. Uh, two more items. This, I just couldn't, couldn't resist. So again, uh, pumpkin seeds, bluegill. Those are one of my main forages in my lake that I like to go to primarily. Here's a nice pumpkin seed from Rapala. I just, that's an awesome, awesome color, paint, con, uh, paint job. So couldn't help that, saw it, had to get it. It's a DT6, so it dives to six. Um, again, this is in the live pumpkin seed color. It's got that arc, arc bill. It's not a straight dive bill. It's kind of comes out and then bevels down. But that pumpkin seed representation is just epic. Uh, it's got that chartreuse bottom, so you can just imagine this guy flashing through the water back and forth, catching those fish's eyes, and uh, I'm sure that's going to be a killer, killer, just pre-spawn through the spawn, and definitely into the post-spawn bass spawning of the bluegill. This is going to be a massive, massive killer. It's uh, rattling, it's got some muted rattle, so it's not overly, overly aggressive, um, and again, Drop my tag down here. There we go. So we got a six foot diving depth. This is a three ounce, a three eighths ounce uh, uh, square or lipped crankbait. It's not a square bait, it's just a crankbait. And finally, something that I think everybody out there, if you can find them, you should have them. I've been looking for them for a while. They finally got them in. But Spike It's pens. Love to have these on my in my tackle bag. Um, I love the dip it for dipping, you know, into the garlic scent or what have you. But having the spike, spike it's dip and glow in the pen allows me to actually do minute details, add in a little red for the fire red for, um, you know, gill slits, draw them out, or do a bleeding trail down part of the body, especially around the hook area, kind of mimic uh, injured bait fish. And of course, chartreuse allows me to do a chartreuse lateral line across my soft plastic bait or a chartreuse tail. Although with soft plastics, I'll just dip it in the chartreuse uh, rather than pen it on for something as, as bulky as a tail, paddle tail, or what have you. Um, but if I just want to do one tip of the tail or just the outside edge or do like rings on it, I go for the, for the spike it's, uh These are both in garlic. I'd love to have this in the bait fish or in the crayfish uh, scent, but they had it in garlic, unfortunately. That's all they had. That being said, I had to grab them when I could see them. All right, so that's the uh, that's the Dick's Hall. Um, uh, if it's 17 minutes, so I'm gonna actually break this here, and then I'll make another video. Like I said, I was planning on doing two, but I wasn't sure if I could fit in. But I don't want to keep you guys uh, for 30 minutes on one video. So, as always, for me to you, this is uh, you know your friendly foul mouth fisherman saying tight lines. Catch me in the next video, and I'll catch you on the next cast. <laughs> Peace, hookaholics. See you in a sec. But that's not by speculation. But the position that I got, I climbed too high to fall, went too hard to drop. Stop clocks on the speed bag.